Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Monster Hunter Rise, and today I'm going to be bringing you my Insect Glaive video. This is a weapon that can attack both from the ground as well as from the air, making it extremely versatile and very, very agile. Now, if you're one of the people that watched the official reveal video of the Insect Glaive for Monster Hunter Rise, and you thought to yourself, man, they did this weapon dirty, I'm here to tell you that you are completely and utterly wrong because Insect Glaive is not only really powerful, but also very, very fun to play in Monster Hunter Rise. But as per usual, we're going to be starting with the very basics. In case you guys are wondering what are the default switch skills, they are the Leaping Slash, the Tornado Slash, and Recall Kinsect. We're going to be starting with those, and then as we advance throughout the video, I will look at the other switch skills that are available to us. Also, we'll be looking at all of the Silk Binds and all of that stuff. But let's start by drawing our weapon. How can you draw your weapon with the Insect Glaive? Well, if you press X from a standing position, you're just going to draw it like any other weapon. If you press uh, X while you're moving, you're going to do a Leaping Slash, which will actually be exchanged for an Advancing Round Slash if you sw swap the Switch skill, which we'll show you guys later. But this is your default draw attack. And if you draw by pressing ZR, you actually send out your Kinsect. Which can be useful because, you know, in a lot of situations, you want to make sure that you send out your Kinsect to collect buffs and whatnot. So you can actually just draw into collecting a buff by pressing ZR. It will just shoot straight forward wherever you happen to be looking. It also goes up, as you can see right there. We hit the head because we're looking more or less in this direction. So it is very useful for you to send out your Kinsect to collect buffs as an opener. Now, usually at this point in most weapons is where I would uh, guide you guys through, you know, the basic attacks of the weapon and whatnot. But something even more important than uh, learning the basics, basic attacks of the Insect Glaive is learning the fundamentals of collecting buffs using the Wirebug. Because quite simply, you're very rarely going to be using your default attack move because you're always going to want to be buffed. Because basically playing this weapon without using the Kinsect buffs, you might as well not play it at all because you're gimping yourself and it's not really going to be a fun time. At least in my opinion, feel free to disagree if you want to, but in reality the whole, you know, fundamental aspect of the Insect Glaive is collecting buffs using your Kinsect. So, let's talk about that. How do you sh send out your Kinsect besides the draw attack that I showed you using ZR? Say you're in the middle of the action and you need to send out your Kinsect. Well, this weapon uses ZR to aim. So if you hold down on ZR, you'll see that we now have a targeting reticule and we can aim in any direction. Now, once you aim, you have two buttons that you can press. Actually, you have three buttons, but we'll talk about the pheromones later. First, let's just focus on the two basic ones. Now, X sends out your Kinsect. Out it goes. And while your Kinsect is out, if you look to the upper left-hand left, upper left -hand side below the numbers, you'll notice there's a stamina gauge that's decreasing. That's how long your Kinsect is able to stay outside. This varies from Kinsect to Kinsect. At the end of this video, I'll be going over all of the different Kinsect types and what their advantages are. But for now, just be aware there is a stamina gauge and eventually your Kinsect has to return to you. As a matter of fact, there is even special Kinsects that have advantages when they come back to you because they attack alongside you, which is something that they've done really, really cool for the Insect Glaive, in my opinion, one of my favorite additions to the weapon. So you send out your Kinsect, but you don't want to be waiting all that time for it to come back. Usually the way it goes is send out your Kinsect, so that will be ZR and X. And then you press ZR and A, and you recall your Kinsect. And for those of you that are not familiar with the Insect Glaive, this is why so many people were frustrated when one of the Silk Bind abilities is called Recall Kinsect, despite the fact that it does so much more than just recalling your Kinsect. But anyways, you guys get the gist of it, right? ZR plus X sends the Kinsect out. ZR plus A brings the Kinsect back. So you're objective is going to be to hit the kinsect on certain um, body parts of the monster. So for instance, if I hit the monster in the belly, the belly of this particular monster is somewhat of a tough area. So it's not um, it's not a very weak area in him, so you're not going to be doing a whole lot of damage. So that means that there's a higher chance that that particular spot is going to give you a defensive buff. And when I say a higher chance, it's 100%. I'm just saying this in general terms so that you understand that there's no, like, 
special formula for every single monster. Sometimes monsters have different buffs in different places. As a general rule of thumb, the belly is usually a safe spot for you to get orange buff. So you shoot your Kinsec, notice that your Kinsec now has orange buff. You can see that in your weapon gauge on the top left hand side, right next to your, sh your uh, sharpness gauge. If you were to attack a different spot of the, of the monster, say for instance its foot, you're going to get white buff. And if you were to attack a different spot, say for instance the monster's head, you're going to get red buff. And that guy's like, okay, red buff, white buff, orange buff, wh what are we talking about here? Okay. So the orange buff is your defensive buff, and that increases your hunter's defense as well as knockback resistance. The red buff is your offensive buff, and that is actually going to change the moveset of the weapon. As a matter of fact, as a rule of thumb, you never really should be attacking the monster before you pick up the red buff, because it is quite simply that important. The moveset of the weapon is not nearly as impactful before you actually get that red buff, so that should always be your priority. And then the white buff increases your hunter's movement speed as well as your jump height. And then you can do combinations of these buffs. So for instance, if you're able to get red and white, you're going to have the increased movement speed, you're going to have the increased jump height, you're going to have the better moveset, but you're also going to have a passive damage bonus on top of all of that. If you have a white and orange, you're going to get the additional defense, the knockback resistance, the movement speed, the jump height, but you're also going to be getting max earplugs, which is insane, okay? Orange and white giving you max earplugs is friggin' phenomenal for the Insect Glaive as far as I'm concerned, which is one of the reasons why I said Insect Glaive is really powerful, and just that little that little thing of orange plus white giving you earplugs is a complete game changer. Guys, we'll see if you start playing out the weapon and you understand how this works, you're gonna go ballistic with it. And then finally, if you pick up all of the buffs, then you get all of these benefits on top of it. I believe it also extends the duration of it to 90 seconds, to be honest. I don't know how much each of the individual buffs lasts because you always want to get the triple buff. If you can't at least get white and red so that you have the additional attack damage and the jump height and the movement speed and all of that, but you always want to get, aim to get all three of them. And on top of all that, you also get additional bonus damage if you have all three buffs together at the same time. Kinsect itself also deals damage. And by the way, you can actually spam the Kinsect against the monster if you want to. Like if I just spam X. You can have your Kinsect just like attack the monster. And because this is a blunt Kinsect, you can even stun the monster with it as well. So, you know, just a little something for you guys to keep in mind. But yeah, ideally collect all of your three buffs. As you can see, eventually they run out. Uh, usually buffs will last you about 90 seconds. So that's a minute and 30 seconds. Uh, there is, however, a special Kinsect type that allows you to extend that for a little bit longer, but I would get used to uh, a minute and 30 seconds. If you have problems with refreshing these buffs and you feel like, oh man, I wish the buffs would last longer, there's also Power Pro Longer, which will expand the duration of the buffs uh, of the Insect Glaive, so consider putting that into your mixed set if that is something that is a problem to you. But in my opinion, I usually don't have too much of a problem, particularly after you get like a reasonably fast Kinsect. Should be fairly easy to just go in there, get your buffs and be done with it. But yes, this is very much your first step. Now, another thing that you can do with the Insect Glaive is you can uh, put pheromones on the monster. So I told you guys earlier that there's three things that you can do when you're aiming your Insect Glaive. The third one is you can press ZL to shoot a pheromone. So like, say for instance, let's put a pheromone on the head. What does that do? For starters, the color of the pheromone will tell you which buff you're getting. So right now I shot it at the head, it's glowing red. You can tell that we're gonna be getting red buff if we hit there. If we shoot the belly, it'll go orange, letting you know that's where the orange buff is. And if it glows white, then you know that that is where the white buff is. But essentially marking that specific spot of the monster means that when you send your Kinsect out, He's going to go straight for that spot. Notice that I wasn't even aiming. So like if I aim for the head and I'm just actually that wasn't really the head. I missed it. There we go. So if I aim for the head and now I shoot my Kinsect like here, he's still going to go straight in a beeline straight to the spot that you marked with your uh, pheromone. So that is a useful way. If you're having if you have maybe like a slower Kinsect, you might try marking something and then shooting the Kinsect over there. 
But to be honest, it's something that you don't tend to use that much unless you're using a powder type Kinsect, which again, we'll talk about later. But um, besides that, there's another attack that also allows you to mark uh, the monster with pheromones, and that is just ZR. If you just press ZR without holding it, you're going to do this, and you're going to mark that spot with a pheromone. And this is useful if you're in the middle of a melee combo, like you're dishing it out on the monster, and you're just like, okay, I need to mark this with a pheromone. Boom. And whenever you mark the monster with pheromones, there's a high chance that if you have a powder-type kinsect, it will actually come out to attack. So I've now swapped to a powder-type kinsect, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. But basically, say you're attacking the monster, suddenly you press your ZR button. Boom. Notice that the kinsect automatically came out and started attacking on its own. That is the use of marking something with a pheromone as well, is that your kinsect, if it is a powder type, it will automatically come out and start attacking the monster. And this is a blast powder type. So these little puffs that he left behind, if you hit them, they'll explode and they will trigger the blast status ailment, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's one of the things that you can do. Uh, you have all kinds of uh, different powder type insects. So you can even have a paralysis powder type. You can have blast powder type. You can have poison powder type. And you can even just have triple ailments in just one build. It's not going to be super effective, but you can trigger all ailments in one build, which is uh, pretty damn sweet if you ask me. So just be aware that that's like one of the main use of the pheromone attacks. It'll get your little kinsect out there and this is particularly useful if you're playing aerial which is uh, something that you can do like this so your kinsect is attacking and you're attacking at the same time so long as the kinsect has um, stamina when he runs out of stamina he comes back to you but you know that is uh, pheromones both shot pheromones as well as using your staff to mark a target with pheromones so now we have to talk about your actual um, combos your basic attacks and stuff like that so I'm going to show you the very basic of the basic, which is without your red buff. Notice that right now we do not have red buff. That is the number one buff. You get this and this and this. These are not particularly good combos. Like, ugh, ugh, ugh. Super slow. Not really fun. And I'm just spamming X. It's terrible, right? Now look what happens when you get the red buff. Many more hits in the combo. And, you know, it's just... A little bit faster and deals a little, a little bit more damage on top of it you should also get the white buff because it also benefits you and it extends uh, all of the buffs because now you have triple buff you always want to be in triple buff whenever it is possible it's not start talking about your basic x attacks when you're actually buffed because this is when it actually matters so if you press x while you're standing still you're going to get the strong rising slash combo if you press x while you're moving you're going to get a strong thrust. So the difference between these attacks is that basically uh, the standing still one is better. Like you can see that you actually hit three times. There was a blast proc there because I am using a blast weapon. But this actually will hit three times. Whereas this one just hits twice and for less damage. But it is faster. So there's less animation commitment. So it also depends on what type of opening do you have. Do you have a small opening? Okay, just a little poke there. And then you can kind of like move away. You can poke. And instantly dodge out of the way if that is something that you want to do. Or you can poke and you see, oh, the monster is actually staggered. You can continue pressing it. And boom, you go into your three combos. Now, the X has three combos. And it, they can either be started by you moving forward or with the standing still attack. Both of them will lead to strong reaping slash and then strong double slash. Those are the follow-ups. So the ideal, uh, you know, thing that you want to do if you want to deal the most damage using X combo is stand still, spam X. And this is what you'll get. Decent amount of damage, not too shabby. Now let's talk about the A combo. Now the A combo, if you're standing still, you get this wide sweep. If you are moving, you get a leaping slash, which gives you a little bit of momentum forward. So it's good for positioning. And the cool thing about this one is that if you follow up any attack that you did by pressing back in A, you're going to get like a bit of an evade attack, which is the dodge slash, which moves you a little bit back. So keep that in mind if you need to reposition and you're like, okay, I need to move back, you can always press back in A. That will move you a little bit back. But other than that, you can use A to actually position yourself, get into a better position. 
And these A and X attacks can pretty much be interweaved together uh, fairly seamlessly. Let me just get my red buff and white buff as well. Um, these can be pretty interweaved seamlessly, so you can go X into A, and you actually shortcut into the second hit of the A combo, which is Tornado Slash. Now, Tornado Slash is the hardest hitting attack of the insect wave in terms of like a single hit of damage. So this is something that you want to do if you have like a high raw damage insect wave. Boom. It'll give you like a, a chunky hit. But as you can see, it all depends on whether or not you get it out from the strong rising slash combo because that will instantly combo into tornado slash. But if you are moving, you're going to get the leaping slash to go along with it before you actually get the tornado slash. But you know, obviously when you're in an actual scenario, you're not always going to have the opportunity to just sit there and wail on a monster standing perfectly still. So the movement one is one that you'll be seeing a lot. But, you know, if you have more experience, then eventually you'll be able to do this way better than me. A decent combo for you to go for is XXAA. So you can go XX and then AA. And you can kind of like loop this if you want to. So you can go XX, AA. Just be aware that it will move you, so you will have to like reposition because Tornado Slash does move you a little bit. But double X into double A is pretty good. You can also do uh, three X's. Let me just get my red buff again. And you guys, you guys get the idea here. You always have to be uh, getting your buffs uh, back from from the monsters that you're fighting because the buffs do run out. And you have to pay close attention to that and always keep up with maintaining your buffs. You'll instantly notice it when you start getting used to the weapon because you'll notice that your attacks are looking a little bit sloppier if you don't have the buffs. So, you know, just keep that in mind. But yeah, you can also do 3x into A. Or you can just go straight into a double A to go straight to Tornado Slash. And then the X will connect you into more Tornado Slashes that's, that's what you want to do. So like that, and then you just go X, and then you can go right back to it, and X, and right back to it. Again, it all depends on what you are trying to achieve. So in my case, I'm playing a weapon with a status ailment, so the small hits are actually beneficial for me. So, you know, doing something like this is actually good because it'll trigger more status effects and therefore more blast. If you have a weapon with a lot of elemental damage, this is also good. Because there's a lot of attacks, that's a lot of elemental damage going in. You don't really need to go straight for Tornado Slash if you're going for those playstyles. On the other hand, if your weapon is mostly all about the raw and you're running like crit boost, weakness exploit, high handicraft, something like that, then you want to get to the Tornado Slash as fast as possible. One of the easiest ways of doing it is the stationary X into A, then you straight in there. Oops, and we lost our buff again. <laughs> But yeah, that's your X and A. You can kind of like even button mash them until you get used to them. Eventually, you'll start getting used to the animations and figuring them out. And obviously, at the end of the video, I'll have a uh, suggested combos type situation to give you a couple of suggestions on how I do it. But um, those are your basic uh, attacks from the ground. So you have three attacks with X, and then you have two attacks with A, and you can chain those together in an infinite combo if you so desire. Now, let's talk about taking it to the sky, because the big thing about this weapon is obviously it has an aerial playstyle. So, obviously you want to be in triple buff whenever you do aerial. You want to be in triple buff whenever you're doing anything. It's just easier for me to get red buff and continue attacking to share the combos, but always be in triple buff. Anyways, ZR plus B is going to cause you to vault. And after you vault, there's a couple of things that you can do. Number one, you can press B to dodge. So this gives you a little bit of aerial mobility. So say an attack is coming and you're just like, oh crap, there's a big AOE in the ground. Boop, get out of there. Oh crap, the monster's coming. Boop, get out of there. That's one of the advantages of the insect glaive. You know, besides all of the other stuff that it has, you can actually go into the air and dodge away. But Obviously, if just dodging into the air is not interesting, right? So what else can you do? Well, if you press A, 
you're going to go into a jumping advancing slash. Which, as you can see, propel this back into the air. And it kind of allows you to do it again. So you can go jumping advancing slash, then press A again, jumping advancing slash. And then press A again, jumping advancing slash. And then press, you can't press A anymore because we were, I think we were out of stamina. But even if you did have enough stamina, you can't bounce off of the monster more than three times. So as you can see, one, two, three, and you're done. You can't continue to press A to do more advancing slashes. So three is the limit. And if you pay attention, you'll notice that every time we do advancing slash, we're dealing more damage because it gives you a stacking buff. So the longer you're in the air, the more damage you will deal. Which is very, very interesting, because this applies to pretty much all the attacks that you can do in the air, and it will come very much in handy if you want to hit with a beefy diving wyvern later down the line. But, you know, just be aware that the thing that propels you upward is landing the last hit. So if you don't land the last hit, like, say, like this, it's not going to send you back to the air. You have to land that last hit in the monster, otherwise, no dice. See? Right there we hit the monster, but we didn't hit the last hit, so it doesn't propel you back into the air. So long as you hit him, though, you can keep on doing this for three times in a row, always boosting your damage. This is usually a very safe playstyle. The thing is, in Monster Hunter Rise, monsters have learned to deal with it, and some of their hitboxes are more vertical on account of that, so don't think you can just be spamming this all the time. You need to be able to learn, you know, what are the attacks that you can punish with this and what are the attacks that you can't. This can also be done without the buffs, obviously, but as you can see, the attack is a lot lamer. So the second you get to this, your objective should be just get back to the ground and get my buffs again. Good God, this can sec this slow. And then, like I said, remember that when you're doing this with a powder type kinsect, not all kinsects, just the powder types, you can have them... Okay, attack the monster, and then you can jump up, and here we go. And you're triggering the little uh, powder clouds he's making while also attacking at the same time. Pretty cool. So what does X do? X brings you to the ground. So if you're in the air and you press X, it brings you to the ground spinning down just like that. Deals a significant amount of damage, also deals a significant amount of mounting damage. So very useful. Do remember that this is also affected by the aerial damage buff. So if you press A here, and you do it like three times, and then by the time you get to number three, you press X, it deals a significant uh, higher amount of damage. But those are kind of like your options in the air. Now let's talk about your Silkbind attacks, starting with the Silkbind Vault. So Silkbind Vault is the one Silkbind attack that you can't change on the Insect Glaive, and what it does is it pro propels you forward. It's ZL and X, and it propels you forward like so. You guys are like, well, that's not that great. But this is one of those Silkbind moves that is designed to help you position yourself better rather than to inflict damage. So say the monster is really far away from you, and you just like want to get there fast. Boom, ZL and X. You can also do B. You can then go A. And boom, you're there. You want to reposition again. I'm going to go over here, and then I'm going to go over there. And then I'm going to do this again. It doesn't allow you to go beyond your limit of uh, three jumps out of the monster. So, like, you can't do your advancing, um, your mid-air advancing round slash, whatever it's called, jump, your jumping advancing slash. It will not allow you to break the rule of only being able to do that three times in the monster, but it will allow you to position yourself a little bit better if you need to do so. So, you know, think of it as a, a helping thing to help you position and just extend your airtime should you need it. Even to navigate the map, maybe you don't have a Palamute and you need to navigate the map fast. You know, the Insect Glaive can actually play the, the Floor is Lava game by doing this. You can just go like, okay, and now B, and now ZL and X, and now B, and now ZL and X, and now B. You know, you're basically playing the floor is lava, and then at the end you can go for a strong advancing, uh, jumping advancing slash. So, 
It's got a lot of potential, but it is not a skill that is designed around you dealing damage, although you can use it offensively. Say, for instance, if I target the monster and I'm like, okay, he's right there and I just want to go right at him and start attacking, you can instantly press X to come on down, spinning on top of the monster. So you go ZL and X, and then X again. You're just going to come right down on top of the monster if you learn how to target that properly. It's not an insignificant amount of damage, and it's a very, it can become a uh, decent offensive move, if that is your objective. So now let's talk about the move that nobody liked from those videos, which is ZL plus A, which is Recall Kinsect. And it basically gives you that little uh, dodge backwards. Now, one thing that kind of frustrates me with Recall Kinsect is the fact that it cannot be done while you're in the air. So see, you're in the air, and I'm pressing ZL and A, nothing is happening. Uh, then again, it could potentially make the weapon a little bit too powerful if you were able to just like dodge stuff in the middle of the air Because the advantage of this move is that it actually has invincibility frames So if you do it at the right times, you're gonna be able to avoid all damage. So let me just make the monster here stomp And while we're at it, let me grab my red buff again white buff Oh, we got the orange one. Eh, eh. Ah, uh, see, now you're getting to some of the frustrations of the insect wave is when the monsters are moving. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to get your... get your extracts. But as you can see right there, we're not affected. We have invincibility frames. And on top of it, you get healed too, but only if you're close to the monster. So this is good if you're, like, doing a combo and you see, oh, crap, monster's bringing in something big. And it took me too long. But basically you're attacking and you see, oh, big attack incoming, and boom. You just dodge away, you get a heal, you avoid the attack. It's pretty damn good, in my opinion. It's a lot better than a lot of people give it credit for. But the thing is, it's competing with something very, very hard, which is the Diving Wyvern. And what the Diving Wyvern is, is like your single most powerful nuke in the whole weapon. ZL plus A, boom. And you get that. Your character goes into the air and then comes back down. Naturally, this is a move that you can do from the air as well. So if you're in the middle of attacking the monster uh, airborne, and you're like, oh man, I see an opening for diving wyvern. You can just press the L and A. Boom. Damage. Big damage. That's the highest damage number that you've seen in the weapon so far and by far. But uh, do remember that we have that thing that we just talked about that our aerial attacks actually buff our aerial damage. So if you're in the middle of the air, and you're doing jumping advancing slashes, and a one, and a two, and a three for maximum damage, and then I'm gonna dodge it. Wyvern, 661. That was twice the amount of damage that we dealt uh, from the other Wyvern, which, and when you're talking about 600 damage, as far as I'm concerned, you're talking like, greatsword levels of damage in a single hit and it can get higher than that like my set is not particularly optimized for big uh wyvern uh, diving wyvern damage but yeah that is something that you can do but do keep in mind that this playstyle has a tendency that you're just like oh man i want to get you know all of my ducks in a row to do the big diving wyvern and that is actually something that i would advise you you know not to do unless the opportunity presents itself like, look at that, 755. That's a lot of damage. And it can be very tempting for you to just go like, oh my god, I'm just going to do that all the time. No, because monsters move. Sometimes you're not able to land the three hits from um, from jumping, advancing, slash, or you might, not be, you might miss one or something, and it destroys the whole thing. So, like, if you see an opening for diving wyvern, like, use it. Don't hesitate just because, no, this one's not going to be as much damage as I want to. Unless, you know, you you specifically want to just see the big number, then sure, go for it. Do whatever you want. I'm just letting you know that you should use it when the opportunity presents itself, and not only when it will do the most possible damage in mankind, okay? Now we're going to go on to another switch skill, and that is uh, we're going to be swapping Leaping Slash for Advancing Round Slash. This is actually an interesting one. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it because I kind of feel like it breaks my flow with the insect wave, but I can see where it has its uses. So this actually replaces your draw attack. So if you're running around and you press a direction and you press X, 
You're not gonna get this. The forward round slash. As opposed to your traditional, you know, leaping slash. And if you remember, the the leaping slash was actually from the A combo. So now if you're moving forward, press A. You get the forward round slash. So again, this is a good move if you have a lot of elemental damage. If you're trying to inflict uh, status ailment. It's pretty good. Because you got a lot of small hits. The thing is, as you can see... Oops, that was actually a misclick there. As you can see, it actually has a significant amount of animation commitment. You're like, oh man, I'm going to be open during all of that time? Hmm, don't know about that, but the interesting thing about this move is that it also has a built-in counter, but it does have a tight window. And if you get hit while you're doing it, it will actually send you into the air, which you can then use to combo into pretty much anything that you can do while you're in the air. Like, you can use that. Go straight into a diving wyvern if that's what you want to do. That's perfectly fine. So, like, you can do... Whee! Boom! Or, you can go into your traditional, like, um... Whatchamacallit, the jumping, advancing, strong slashes or whatever. Because you're in the air. You can do anything that you would usually do in the air. So that parries the attack, basically. So, it can be a good thing, like you're in the middle of a combo, you can kind of just like butt mash your way through a monster if that's what you want to do. And if you land that attack just right, you know, you're going to be punishing it with it. But as you can see, one of the biggest problems with that particular attack is that it will actually move you in that general direction. So like, sometimes you might get out of position if you're going to be using this attack. So just keep that in mind. So the next switch skill replaces Tornado Slash with Tetra Seal Slash. And uh, this is another one of those multi-hit attacks from the Insect Glaive, which means you're going to benefit more from this attack if you are using something like Status Ailment or Elemental Damage. But if you're going for High Raw, I would still recommend the Tornado Slash. Let me just grab my buffs first, because this one doesn't even work if you don't have buffs. Just a red buff. All the other buffs are kind of optional. I'm just like used to always getting the three buffs. But basically, this is the last hit on the A combo. So you access it just like I told you uh, previously. If you just uh, st stand stationary and press X, and then press A, it'll take you into the Tetra Seal Slash. And you'll notice that uh, not only it marked it, but instantly the Powder Kinsect came out. If you are running with a Powder Kinsect, and remember, there's different types of Kinsects. We're going to be talking about that in a bit. Uh, it will in automatically come out and start attacking the monster after a Tetra Seal Slash. Now, this one is a good attack. I still don't tend to use it that much because I'm just so used to muscle memory from Tornado Slash that I'm kind of used to the way that that moves my character. But it is something to experiment with, and I do think that this one is a good attack for sure. I think that this one, to me, is a little bit better than the other one that I showed you guys earlier, the Advancing Round Slash, because it doesn't take me out of my position. Like, I can stay stationary, while still doing my attacks, and it will not hurt me by moving me out of the way. And it's cool that if you play with um, Powder-type Kinsects, it does this. The problem of this attack is if you don't play with Powder-type Kinsects, sometimes you might have a problem in that you might mark an area that you don't actually want your Kinsects to go after, and then, you know, you tend to forget that in the middle of the chaos of, of battle, and then you're trying to send your Kinsect out to get buffs, and they're just going towards the area where the Pheromone is. So, you know, just keep that stuff in mind as well. But anyways, those are all of the switch skills as well as all of the basic stuff of the Insect Glaive. Now it's time to talk about Kinsect types. So if you speak to Haman, the blacksmith, he has an option there called Purchase Kinsect. So in Monster Hunter Rise, you no longer feed your Kinsects or do anything, you know, like go through a Kinsect skill tree or whatever. You can just buy all of your Kinsects. Now, through the fact that I didn't really play that much Insect Glaive when I was going up the ranks, I never really used these um, weaker Kinsects that you have here. I went straight to the, the more powerful ones that you get closer to the end. I assume that if you're starting fresh, you know, on a fresh save file, not all of these are going to be unlocked, and you're going to have to mess around uh, and actually level up, and they'll be unlocked as you progress f uh, further into the game. So I'm going to be starting by talking about some of these green ones, and then we'll talk about those two yellows, because I think that those are just kind of important to give a little bit of a mention, because they do something unique that no other Kinsect currently does. That's not to say it won't, 
So I'm, first I'm gonna teach you guys how to understand what a Kinsect does, as opposed to have you guys just like, oh, I want the Carnage Beetle or the Empress Wing because you memorized the name. The most important thing is understanding what each of them does. So there's four types, mainly four types of Kinsects right now. And you can see that in the Kinsect type, which this one that we're looking at right now, Monarch, Alu Monarch Alucanid, is an assist type. It says right there, Kinsect type assist. And then it is also two different attack types that they can have, and that is severing or blunt. So the difference is fairly explanatory. So if it is severing, then it's like you're swinging a, a, a sword at the monster, right? It does slashing damage. If it's blunt, then it's like you're swinging a hammer at the monster. It does blunt damage. And you can stun monsters with blunt damage, but you can't chop tails with blunt damage. But the thing is, your, um, your insect glaive already does slashing damage, so you don't necessarily need more severing damage unless you're trying to slash a tail with just using your Kinsect, which you can do. But, you know, and obviously there's different hit zones and monsters that uh, will be affected differently, whether you're using a slashing attack or a blunt attack. So those are all things to keep in mind, but just be aware that every Kinsect has two attack types, severing or blunt, and blunt will KO monsters. So if you like, if you spam your Kinsect at the monster's face, you can eventually get a KO. And that's not the only way to do it either, because this particular Kinsect type, these two are assist types. And what that means is that they will actually attack alongside you in some of your combos. So they don't actually go out and attack like the powder type that I've showed you, but they will attack at the same time as you attack the monster, which is actually pretty cool. These are my favorite Kinsect types right now, the assist types. And on top of it, they have a special Kinsect bonus, which is dual color. In this case, dual color attack. That means that no matter where you hit the monster with the Kinsect when you're collecting your buffs, it always gets two buffs. One of those buffs is attack, 100% guaranteed. And then it'll give you either the white buff, which is the speed buff, or the orange buff, which is the defense buff. So these are very, very, very good. So if you know, you just pick which one you want. Personally, I'm very, uh, I'm very biased towards Carnage Beetle because it allows me to every now and then just knock monsters on their asses, while at the same time also having severing damage, blunt damage, and getting two buffs at once. I think the Carnage Beetle is hella good, but that does. I'm not an expert, right? Because I don't play Insect Glaive all that much, so you know. Then you have another one here which is also severing and assist. And notice there's always uh, two types of them. Uh, like if you go down now, we have the blunt. Also blunt and assist. Difference is this one has, uh, these one have more power and their dual color thing that always comes is attack. On this one you get speed, which is a white buff. So it doesn't deal as much damage when you hit the monster with it. But then again, I don't think it's that important the amount of damage that the Kinsec does because there's currently, as far as I'm aware, there's no way to increase that damage. The only thing that uh, increases that damage is the Kinsect level that you have on your Insect Glaive. Like, if you go to your Insect Glaive, every one of them has, like, a specific Kinsect level. But, yeah, depending on the level um, that you have on your Glaive, that is going to determine how much damage they will deal. But it's not like you can stack attack to make your, your Kinsects deal more damage. They don't. So in this case, this one collects two buffs, and one of the buffs that is always guaranteed is the white buff. Um, and then you have the bonnet file, which is the same thing, except it's blunt instead of being severing. Then you have this one, and this one is really cool. So this one is a powder type, so it works like I showed you with uh, the blast, the one that left little dusts of blast, except this one deals poison and paralysis, so he drops both. Uh, little puffs that drop poison and another puff that drops paralysis. So if I was to use my weapon with this Kinsect, I could have all three status ailments in one build because the weapon would have blast and then this guy would drop poison and paralysis. It's pretty cool. Now, uh, do notice that all of them also have another status besides their power, which dictates the damage. There's also speed. The slower they are, the harder it is for you to get your buffs when you want. So keep that in mind, you know, whether or not it suits your play style to play around with a slower Kinsect. There are specific Kinsects that are all about the speed. Those are super fast at getting your buffs, but they don't really bring anything uh, of note to the table besides that. And then there's also the heal factor because there are some of these Kinsects that drop behind uh, heal powders. So the higher their healing thing is, the, the more uh, healing you'll receive from their powder. This one doesn't actually 
drop healing powder, so their heal is whatever. Uh, then you have the same thing, except this one, instead of poison paralysis, has heal and poison. It is the blunt version. So in this case, you don't have a blunt version with poison paralysis. You get a blunt version that has heal and poison. But, you know, kind of like the same thing. It jumps around, drops little puffs of healing. If you want to heal yourself, that's a good one to have. This is the one that we were using while, we, while I was doing the, the tutorial over in the training room. He drops little uh, dusts of blast like I showed you. This one is just a pure healing type. So it is blunt and it has the healing powder. So he drops the healing powder stuff. And then this one is a speed type with charge chain attack. So what does that mean? Now this one, I think I should actually show you guys in the training room because this one is quite unique. So we're going to go back to the training room and I'll show you this one. So if you notice what said in the description for this one was charge chain attack. So he's got a, a special attack that he does, um, which you can do whenever the bottom of your insect glaive is blue. So you can see that mine right now is blue. That indicates that his cooldown is up and, you, and I can basically do the special skill. So whenever you send him out, here's what he's going to do. He does multiple attacks and he gets your extract. Notice how the bottom of my insect glaive is now red. I'm going to call him back. Still red. Still red. Still red. And blue. And now that it's blue, I can send him again and he'll do it again. If I was to send him out while it's red, he'll just do a regular attack. So you can still send him out, but he's not going to do the special attack. And the cooldown only diminishes when the Kinsec is in your arm. This is one of the reasons why I'm not actually using them. Like, I would love to use this Kinsec. Hell, I would love to do a build all about using this Kinsec. But the fact that you send him out once, and then you're supposed to wait. And I'm like, well, but I need to go get my other buffs. So I go and I get my white, and I go and I get my orange. And meanwhile, cooldown still going. Still going. And then I can send him again. And it's like, sure, it's cool, but I would like a way to, you know, take more advantage of it. A skill that would do something about how long this cooldown lasts. I don't know if it's affected by Kinsect level, but my Insect Glaive here has maximum uh, Insect, has maximum Kinsect level. So, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, that's what this one does. And he's quite special, which is why I wanted to show you. While we're at it, I would like to show you what it looks like when you're using one of the dual kinsects. More specifically, the one that I like the most, which is the Carnage Beetle. Right here. So the way it works with the dual kinsects is notice that when I send him out now, for starters, he's slow. He's very slow. So you're going to have to have patience with that. Notice how he now has buffs 1 and 2. So now I can bring him back. And I have both buffs. Now I'm going to be getting buff 3. And the cool thing about this guy is, like I said, because he's an assist type, so not only he brings two buffs back to you, but he also attacks alongside you. So I'm not sure if you guys could tell, but you can see the Kinsect actually going out around the, um, the Insect Glaive. Do pay attention to his stamina level because he will not follow up your attacks if he does not have stamina. Let me just grab my buffs again because I just lost them. So like if we do like this. He follows our attacks right now because he still has stamina. But if we keep attacking eventually he's going to run out of stamina and he's not going to follow our attacks. Like, notice, right now he doesn't have stamina. So the next set of attacks, he will not follow us. He's currently recovering. Once he recovers stamina, he goes back to following you through your attacks. But if you ever find yourself like, why is my kin assist type Kinsec not following me into battle? That's why. But anyway, there's a couple of more Kinsec types that I'd like to talk about. We stopped over on the charge chain attack one. There's obviously a blunt version of it as well, which is fairly good for getting yourself some KOs and stuff like that. Uh, and then the next ones are fast charge. So these are just all about the speed. So they do essentially the same thing as the charge chain attack ones, except um, they just do one heavier charged attack and they're super fast at navigating the, the battlefield as well. So they're all about just like going in there, boom, doing one big hit. 
which I think is like 59 damage, 56 damage. You know, that's what these do. I find the, um, the charge chain attack ones more interesting if you're going to go for that play style. But, you know, that is what these do. Uh, and there's two of them. Obviously, there's a severing one as well as a blunt one. Now, I did tell you guys that I wanted to talk about these two yellow ones. The reasoning is their Kinsec bonus is triple up time. So what does that mean? It increases your time with triple buff. However, in my opinion, it's not long enough to really warrant using one of these over any one of the other ones. You get, uh, at least from my time, you got about 18 more seconds uh, added to the thing. So you had 1 minute and 30 seconds, you get 1 minute and 48. Maybe it's supposed to be 1 minute and 50, and I miscalculated it, but I didn't spend too much time on it because I was like, ah, 20 seconds, I don't really think that's worth it. But hey, the option is there if that is something that you want. I believe that we'll probably be seeing some Kinsects being added later in the game, but I could be wrong there. But yeah, that's my, um, that's the idea that I get from it, at least. But, you know, these are all the Kinsect types and all the things that they do. And like I said, personally, I like Assist a whole lot. Uh, if you want to play a lot of Aerial, I would recommend you to use Powder types. But uh, as per usual, to each his own. That, that's going to be up to you. Test them all out. Uh, play around with them. They're fairly cheap to buy, so it's not like it's a big investment to have to... Oh my god, I can only pick one. You can buy as many of them as you want. So it's not really a big deal. Now, the Insect Glaive has another unique thing that it does that I don't really, I really can't think of another weapon that does anything like this, and that is you can actually climb walls using just the Insect Glaive. So basically, you can vault into the air and air dodge into a wall, and you'll stick there, and it regenerates your stamina. And then you're like, okay, but how do I actually climb? Well, you can press A to jump down, and then go back up. And as you can see, we're going slowly up and up and up. And so long as the wall is climbable, you can keep doing this forever. I mean, it's not like this is going to be something that you need to do when you're fighting a monster. But you know, it's something that's unique to the weapon. And I figured, hey, might as well bring this up as well. <laughs> and finally, let's talk about suggested combos. Now, like I told you guys, I personally like to use an assist type Kinsect. So I don't mind that the fact that he's slow. So I'm just like, whatever. Go give me my buffs. And I even missed the stationary target. That's how slow it is. Boom. Get your buffs. Always. That's always the first thing that you want to do. And then depending on the monster, you know, I might just straight go in. If I see an opening in the ground, I'll go like, okay, X, straight into Tornado Slash or Tetra Seal, if that's what I have equipped. Again, always depends on the weapon that you have equipped. This would be something that I would do a lot. So going just from stationary X into A. Please notice that I'm not using any of the uh, any directional input when I'm doing this. I'm just like super fast combo X into A, boom. This amount of damage. Whether you're using uh, tornado slash or tetra seal, it's pretty good and it's a very good like fast combo. If you have more time, then I'll probably will go like okay X into X into X into A. You know, that gives you a uh, significant more uh, chunk of damage, a chunk of hits in there. But again, if I have more of a raw damage weapon, I can also just initiate by going AA. And I would be using Tornado Slash in that particular case. But yeah, you can just go in there, AA. Do remember that that A attack helps you position. If you see after you do the attack that you get more openings, then you can go into X for additional damage. Which, by the way, you can actually go A into X into A again, and you get a really good combo. You use the A to position yourself, and then the X to do the strong rising slash into the Tetra Seal or the Tornado Slash if you don't lose your buffs like I did. See, this is one of the problems of the Tetra Seal. Like, right now I'm trying to get white buff, but because the thing is there, the... Um, the Kinsect was just going straight after it. This is one of the reasons why I tend to use Tornado Slash more often than Tetra Seal. But yeah, you can use A to position yourself, and then follow it up with an X, and then follow it up with another A input. You go into the Tetra Seal Slash, that's also a really good combo. And then you can continue following it up with more X inputs. And then more A, and basically you can just like, you know, you can keep this going for as long as you want. Just be aware, whenever you get to the end of the Tetra Seal Slash or the Tornado Slash, use X to kind of like 
link the combos together. And then obviously there's the air as well, so you're not just going to be in the ground the whole time. So for the air, usually what I do is I'll start this off and then I'll go A or I'll go B to position myself better then back to A. And then I might go down with an X or if I have opening obviously for a diving wyvern, I must be like, oh, diving wyvern, sure. Boom, in the head, yes sir, badoom. So it's not like... There's a lot of complex combos. It's all about just judging how much time you have to deal damage, as I always say. That that's like that's like the the thing that I say I think in every weapon. How much time do I have to deal damage? And that dictates what combos you will end up using. By rule of thumb, you can usually dish out um, more damage on a stationary target in the ground. At least that's the way that it was in World. I haven't played enough of Insect Glaive in Rise to really say, you know, ground versus aerial. I'll tell you that they've definitely done an effort to make um, to make aerial more viable with the whole thing of buffing the attacks and whatnot, but, you know, it's also a bit of a risk because monsters tend to attack more towards the air now on account of the fact that we have so much aerial mobility and you're not always going to be able to do everything that you want in the air. It was a lot easier to get aerial hits in Monster Hunter World than it is in Rise. But anyway, that's the guide. As per usual, this gets you started with the weapon. Now you have to go out there and actually master it if this is the weapon that you like the most. Hopefully this helped you out. If it did, make sure to hit that like button. If it did not help you out, if you did not like this video, then hit the dislike button because feedback is important. Really appreciate you staying all the way through the end and watching the whole thing. And um, yeah, if you usually enjoy my content, subscribe, bell notification icon, all of that jazz. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong, stay safe, peace out.